Welcome to the Heavy Spoilers Show. I'm your host, Paul is Awful, and I'm so excited to talk about Black Mirror Season 6. The show has returned, and for the next week, we're going to be going through every single episode to bring you full and explained breakdowns. First up is Joan is Awful, which centers around a woman discovering that her entire life has been turned into a quote unquote Netflix drama. This showcases all of her faults, fantasies, and it unearths every dirty little secret she has. They also do a big twist come the end, which I'll talk more about as we get further into it. Extremely fourth wall breaking, it actually has a number of different Black Mirror and Netflix Easter eggs in it. For the first part of the video, I want to go through what they are, and then from here, we'll go into its plot and meaning. Now the opening, when the title itself is revealed, is the same font as Netflix, and we learn that in this universe that it's called Streamberry. We see the service being accessed at several points, and there's lots of different titles that you can catch on it. You can see Lock Henry Truth Will Out, and this is a documentary on episode 2 from this season. There's also Sea of Tranquility, which was first brought up during Nosedive, and later in this season during the episode Maisie Day. Finding Ritman is a reference to Black Mirror Bandersnatch, the Callow Years is a nod to Prime Minister Michael Callow from the National Anthem, Hot Shots is from 15 Million Merits, and in that there was a show called Bother Guts, which involved feeding fat people that's featured here too. There's a documentary on Victoria Skillane from the episode White Bear, and also one about Ashley O from Rachel, Jack and Ashley 2. Finally, you can catch your project titled Junipero Dreaming, which features similar imagery to the episode San Junipero. Now the idea of Streamberry turning Joan's life into a documentary is of course a comment on a number of things involving Netflix and privacy in general. Netflix have recently been accused of turning serious events into commercial commodities that twist the horrific into entertainment. The Jeffrey Dahmer show starring Evan Peters had a lot of outcry from the families of those that were murdered, and there was criticism at the time centred around them turning things into these bingy TV episodes. Making a murderer made them millions, Tiger King was a massive success, but the people who featured in these have often spoken out about how much damage it caused. Now Joe Exotic was going to jail either way, but the fame given to the other people in the dark hasn't really had its positives. There's this idea as well that bad people often get given the spotlight more than the good ones, and this is of course also reflected in Joan herself. She's a cheat, mean boss, and overall a kind of crappy person. Still though, there's a lot of people like this that exist in the world, and some people who don't even hit the thumbs up button on videos, even though it's free and it supports the channel a lot. She fires her employees, meets with her ex, and confesses to her therapist that she's sick of the vanilla lifestyle. Not only is she perfect for a Black Mirror episode, but she's also perfect for a Streamberry show too. Done due to her not reading the terms and conditions, I think this also talks about what people give up unintentionally online. People post way too much of their personal lives on social media, and you really start to wonder who ends up actually owning that. You could say it's the user, but as we know, these sites also take things for themselves and sell them onto companies that are after your data. This is to push ads normally, but there have been complaints that they use them for other means. No one reads the terms and conditions, and we're completely unaware of what we're signing over. They also talk about the dangers of deepfake technology as well, with us learning that Hayek has given her likeness so that a quantum computer can create scenes using her face. There's a movie that's just released that brings back some dead actors, which I won't spoil, but it's definitely a comment on how we tend to gravitate towards stars, even if they have no involvement whatsoever. Himish Patel plays Krish, and we also get Kate Blanchett playing Joan and Salma's version. I love the whole idea of the likeness thing, and they actually do a very, very clever meta joke at the midpoint of the episode. It's also sort of talking about how content's now just run by AI, which is obviously a relevant fear that's being used as one of the many, many reasons the writer's strike is happening. Either way, I love the whole idea of them deconstructing the likeness thing, and they actually do a very, very clever meta joke at one point in the episode. Joan speaks to a lawyer, and in the adapted show, she then gets played by Wunmi Masaka. Now, Masaka actually appeared in the Black Mirror episode playtest, and the joke here is that Appearing in an earlier episode of Black Mirror means that she signed her likeness away to be used in other episodes, which is why she appears here. Other easter eggs include Sandy's phone showing a social media app called Smithereens, and a newspaper has an article saying grains going out of style. Now a grain is a device from the entire history of you, and this allowed people to record their entire day. It led to nothing but unhappiness, with characters obsessing over everything, and having it all held up on a microscope is something that Jones subjected to. On the back of the newspaper, we can also see that there's an advert for TCKR, which is a nod to the software company Tuckersoft. Tuckersoft appeared in Black Mirror Bandersnatch, and I loved how this episode had lots of ties to the Black Mirror universe. 
Now, there's also a protest for Michael Smart at JFK, and he was a local politician in Demon 97. You can see now that he's the PM of the UK, and it's kind of nicely building upon what happened in that episode. Now, what the episode also brilliantly comments on is how shows are over-dramatised and elements are changed and altered to make things appear a certain way. Sure, Joan, she is pretty bad, but they still elevate and change some aspects of it to make her appear worse. The show and its depictions are what's seen as the truth, with everyone's perception being that it plays out like that. It's a really good analysis of how, based on a true story and true crime dramas, can often sway public opinion as they tend to go for drama rather than documenting the history. All the relationships she has end up falling apart, and this includes Rob Delaney's Mac, who can't be intimate with her. This is due to him overthinking the show and how it will look in that, and yet, it's just kind of a talk about how once you're under the microscope, you can't stop thinking about it. Now in the end, Joan ruins a wedding by chowing down on Buster Burgers and a laxative, and yet, kind of shows up and shits over the whole event, literally. Worst things happened at mine, because hey, you should see them more and my wife ended up marrying, but she realises that if they want a show, then she's gonna go and give it to them. Now this sort of becomes a get out of jail free card for Joan, with the company now covering for their brand new star. This could also be a further comment on Hollywood and how they go above and beyond to protect their stars, movies and shows from any controversy. Might not be, yeah, but there's, there's more things you can point to recently in, in certain films where this has been going on. Now Hayek is furious that her likeness has been lent to a character doing this and it leads to some stuff I never thought I'd hear her say. I mean, doesn't my asshole have any rights? Absolutely hilarious, <laughs> and, and dear me. Also, important to bear in mind, the guy here is played by Rich Fulcher, who is an actor, and, and that kind of plays into the twist we get later on. Anyway, Hyatt goes off to Jones, which is where they meet face to face. I didn't uh, actually think that you would come to welcome to my home. It's weird watching this, because you kind of imagine what it would be like seeing a TV show like this in real life, when we're kind of seeing this as a TV show in real life that's about a, a real life TV show, which is then made by AI ends up going into a complete teardown of Netflix on Netflix, and we learn that George Clooney has been brought back, which, pff, again, is some relevant uh, move, recent movie social commentary there. Now, they break into the Streamberry offices, which is when Joan hears that she was just a guinea pig, and that they're planning on running it on more and more people. Joan was picked because she was an average person, but even just an average life can be changed into entertainment. This is done if it's edited correctly and given star power by a big actor. We also see more from the Is Awful franchise, and I believe there's a title card here for Charlie, which is a reference to Charlie Brooker. Busting into a room with Michael Sarah working as a tech, we get a big twist to learn that Joan isn't even the real Joan, and that she's the AI using the likeness of Annie Murphy. Real life clips of her on the red carpet are used, and there's also a mention of her show, which is called Shits Creek. Due to there being shows within shows within shows, there needs to be a top level to it all, but unfortunately for Joan, she isn't on that one. In order for the show to work, the characters need to believe that they're real, so all their responses are programmed to be the way we see them. There are theories that we could all exist in a simulation without even knowing it, and in the end, Joan does what Joan would do, which is destroy the computer. After it goes down, we see the real Joan with Annie Murphy now in Hayek's place, and the pair obviously met because of the whole church thing happening in real life. Joan has finally managed to free herself though, and we see that having her life basically broken down allows her to reassess things and see what's actually important. Due to her actions, she has a tag on her leg, but she feels like the main character in her life finally. She's found importance in the things that she once took for granted due to losing them, and we find her working away in a coffee shop that she's now opened. Visited by Annie, it's actually nice to get a, a happy ending in Black Mirror, because uh, you don't get them often. And that closes out the episode on a very high note. A huge shout out to our partners over at thestreamer.com who've done a massive review of all the episodes on the show. And that will be linked as the top comment. So if you want to read some reviews, then go over there and check them out. If you want to review it yourself, then obviously let me know your thoughts on the episode below. And I can't wait to see if, if there's anything I missed in this because I'm sure there is something. Anyway, let me know your thoughts in the comment section below. And if you want to support the channel for as little as 99 cents a month, then please click the join button. And as a thank you, you'll get early access to videos every week. If you want something else to watch, we've got a breakdown of the Flash on screen right now. So definitely head over there right after this. Out of the way, huge thank you for sitting through the video. I've been Paul, and I'll see you next time. Take care. Peace.